Well, there's no doubt that former President Donald Trump has left a lasting impression on the Republican Party. Whether he'll be reelected in 2024 remains to be seen. Despite all of his controversies, he remains the party's front runner. Well, tired of witting Donald Trump and the end of the grand old party is Jonathan Carl's latest book exploring Donald Trump's effect on the GOP. And John has a long history of covering Mr. Trump. He joins us now with more on the new book. John, good to see you. Hey, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Hey, so you write early on in the book that American history is filled with stories of those who overcame adversity to, to go on to bigger heights, Martin Luther King, Abraham Lincoln. You say is Trump, Trump is just not one of those people, but does he reflect values that maybe some Americans don't want to admit exists? And what do you say to people who say, well, you must be a never-Trumper? Well, I mean, I'm not a never Trumper. That's an easy one. I'm I'm a reporter, and uh, and, and Trump himself has acknowledged uh, that, that I treated him fairly uh, in the White House. I felt that was important and important to treat him with respect. He was elected by the American people. But what I was referring to there is, you know, Trump has never been able to acknowledge a mistake, let alone a defeat. He thinks it would bring everything down, his entire image, which is that of the guy that always wins, the biggest, the greatest, the best. Um, and, you know, I've been covering politics for a long time. Some of the most powerful political speeches I have seen in my life have been concession speeches, concession speeches uh, by, by politicians uh, who have lost, uh, but, but who understood uh, that there is something uh, more to America than uh, constantly insisting you have to win at all costs. As you know, of course, there's been a lot in the news lately that uh, former president using a lot of Hitler's language, Mussolini. He's recently said, I don't even know anything about Hitler uh, and denies all of that. But it, it struck me as a question, which is, well, either that's the truth and he doesn't know anything about it. And if that's the case, then he's adopting the same language or he's not telling us the truth. And he does know the Hitler language. Well, look, I have I spent some time researching this, looking back into it. There was an interview way back in 1990 uh, where Trump was uh, asked about something that his ex-wife, uh, just re recently ex-wife Ivana uh, Trump had said that he kept a, a book of Hitler's speeches calling my, called My New Order uh, uh, by his bedside. And uh, Trump uh, was asked about that, and he actually acknowledged that he had the book. <laughs> he acknowledged that he had the book, he even said who it was who gave it to him, a, uh, a, a Hollywood executive. Uh, he gave the guy's name. Uh, the reporter uh, who asked the question went and, and confirmed it uh, with that Hollywood executive. So he has had a book of Hitler's speeches in his presence. Whether or not uh, he spent any time reading it, I have no idea. But clearly his recent language, talking about vermin, his, speaking of his enemies as vermin, mm -hmm talking about immigrants poisoning the blood of America, those are phrases that Hitler used. Now, did Trump know it when he first said them? I don't know. But I do know this. He now knows that people have pointed out that's Hitler's language, and he continues to use it. And it resonates with a lot of people. Um, talk a bit about his use of the power of projection. If you call him an authoritarian, no, Joe Biden's authoritarian. You're a threat to democracy, Joe Biden's a threat to democracy. He's always used the power of projection. projection. And for him, John, it works fairly well. You know, he did it with fake news. Uh, fake news uh, was a term used to describe actual fake news, uh, you know, uh, during the 2016 campaign. And he took that and he labeled it on actual news organizations and actual reporters whenever he didn't like their coverage. So yes, it's something that he has done uh, quite effectively. He takes what has been pointed at him uh, and he's flipped it around and said those that are accusing him of that are actually uh, the ones guilty of it. I mean, it's 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 remarkable, it's consistent, and he does it all the time. You did an interview with Nikki Haley back on December 17th, so it's after the book came out, but the, the messages yeah. are there. Basically, she said the media is obsessed with Donald Trump. That's the problem here. Is she right? Is the media obsessed with him? Well, I, I think that that is, so, first of all, I, I hate, as you know, I, I hate the concept of the media as one big monolith. What is the media? I mean. I'm a reporter for ABC News, The New York Times, Chicago Tribune, WGN, uh, conservative media, Fox News, News. What, what is the media? But there's no question that Trump has been somebody uh, who has been covered relentlessly for now almost a full decade. Uh, and I actually think it's the reason why I, w I wrote the book that he's actually undercovered as a candidate for reelection. We, we, we hear stories, we write stories, we follow 
uh, you know, the various legal saga. But what has Trump been up to since he left the White House? And what would he do if he got back into the White House? There's actually not been enough coverage of that. Those were the questions I was asking Nikki Haley about, and that's what I wrote my book about. Well, a lot of people say that if he does get back in the White House, well, there's these guard, you write about this, there's these guardrails that protect yeah. democracy. But your point in the book is don't count on it in a second term. Yeah, I mean, first of all, those guardrails have to be uh, enforced by individuals of goodwill, willing to obey the law, even if the commander in chief is telling them otherwise. And a lot of the people who stood up to Donald Trump, who were really close to him, you know, people like the White House counsels, uh, uh, McGahn and Cipollone, people like his attorney, attorneys general, uh, Jeff Sessions early on, and, and Bill Barr, uh, even his own daughter at times. Well, guess what? None of those people are coming back in a second term. I mean, even Ivanka uh, has made it clear she wants no part of Trump's return to politics. So that Trump will value one thing above all. He's been explicit about this. I write extensively about it in the book. He's been explicit in saying that he will seek out loyalty as the primary characteristic for anybody who would work for him in a second term, John who is absolutely unflinchingly loyal to him. John, a quick 30 seconds. Some say he wins either way, because if he wins the election, it all goes away. If he doesn't win the election, well, then it was all stolen and we'll live with that for the four years. Do you agree? I know. I mean, you know, the, the, the election will will take place. We'll see if he gets the Republican nomination. By the way, I don't think that's a, a done deal yet. He's certainly the overwhelming favorite. And it comes down to a general election. Uh, he And if he's the nominee, he will either win or he will lose. He can cry about losing, complain about it, say he didn't lose, say it was stolen, but there will be an actual result. And this time he will no longer have the power of the presidency to try to overturn that result. Jonathan Carl, it really is powerful reporting in the book, and that's what it is, reporting. It's not opinion, and I thank you so much. Thank you. Jonathan's thank latest you. book, Tired of Winning Donald Trump and the End of the Grand Old Party. It's out now. We'll be right back. Thanks, John.